Hello everybody and welcome to another video on the channel. Today I will be reviewing the Zenith E family of cameras and I hope you enjoy it. So let's begin with the history as usual. The Zenith E was made by the Zenith brand from the Soviet Union from 1965 to 1986. Um, it was produced both in the KM set and the Belomo factories in the Soviet Union and um, they produced around 3 million units. This is a very common camera um, uh, inside the Soviet Union and outside the Soviet Union. Um, this camera came, comes in a lot of uh, forms, colors and editions. The most common edition is this one, it's silver with black leather, but they also produce it in black in black, uh, silver with Olympics, black with Olympics, and the Soviet Union even tried to market this camera outside in the European market by calling it uh, different names, not Zenit, but they used it, uh, they used Kalimar, uh, Reviewflex, uh, Fokina, and other names to sell it in the UK, France, and other uh, markets. Mm, uh, I will be using for this review Zenit ES. Uh, because my Zenit is broken, it's a camera for parts, but this camera is mechanically identical to the Zenit E with the exception of this extra shooting mechanism and this extended uh, visor. That is because the Zenit ES is part of a larger dedicated kit that is the photo sniper kit, which is a kit that comes with a special lens, a Tire 3 FS, that includes a pistol mount, and other accessories that are in this box. So that's why it has those two slight differences, it's just to make it work with the kit. But mechanically and operatively is identical with the exemption of those apps. So uh, having that clear, um, uh, we can start. So remember this camera was produced for around 20 years or something, so um, 21 years. It was produced over 21 years, so it's a massively manufactured camera. And they have a slight differences, as you can see, this timing lever, the leathering texture. You can encounter those subtle differences through the camera's run. But a typical Senit would would look like this. They could come either with Zenith, uh, with sorry, with Helios 44 lenses, Helios 44 slash 2, or Industar uh, 50 lenses like this one. Um, a little disclaimer: um, these cameras uh, need to use a lens that automatically closes every time you use the diaphragm, like so. You see, I didn't touch it, anything and it closed and it doesn't have any pin to close. Uh, you need those lenses because this camera doesn't have a mechanical system that pushes a pin in the lens in order to close it. So you will need these Industar 50 lenses which are very cheap and cool because they are super small. You can use Helios 44.2. You can use Helios 44M with the automatic closure. You can use Pentacon auto lenses with the auto closing diaphragm. Or you can use any um, M42 mount lens that has the automatic closure diaphragm. So bear that in mind when you buy one of these cameras. You will have to, to look for a lens with a specific functioning. Um, that's not um, an inconvenience because there are a lot of cheap lenses that you can use and great lenses too. So, you know, uh, don't worry about it, but have it in into account. Now, the controls of this camera. The controls are very simple. On the front side, you have your, obviously, your lens uh, mounting uh, part. What you do is you simply screw the lens, like so, you put it 
and then you screw it like that. Then you have your uh, self uh, shooting um, mechanism. This is the lever for the counter and this is the shutter. Then you have your flash um, connection socket and your uh, light sensoring device. Those are the controls in the front of the camera. Um, to this side, we have nothing. To the down part, in the Zenit ES only, we have this extra shooting mechanism that, as you can see, is not present in common Zenit ES. So this is how a Zenit ES should look like, unless it's a Zenit ES. By the way, if you are interested in knowing what that photo sniper deal is, you can go to my channel and you can find two videos dedicated solely to the photo sniper. I will be uploading the third and final one on how to use it um, soon. So if you are interested in that, check it out. So let's continue with the Senit E. Now, at the other side, we have the opening of the tray. So in order to open it, you pull up this silver tab and it opens like so this is the inside of the camera you don't have to touch anything in here try never to touch the curtains because they are a soft mechanism they are delicate so don't touch that in order to close it you simply close it softly and you also on the back have your view piece this is Okay, let me see if I can. That's your eyepiece. So you get me. Your eyepiece, standard eyepiece of all from all life. And then in the top is where you have all the controls. You have the cocking lever, the shooting button, the uh, film counter, the uh, clutch for rewinding the film, the speed selector, the flash socket, this uh, camera doesn't have an automatic uh, shooting flash so you have to use a flash with a connector and connect it here and put it here. You have your um, light uh, reading device and you have your light calculation system. I want to speak in detail how to use this system because I have made a dedicated video in the channel so if you want to know how this works and understand it better check that video out um, and you also have here your um, rewind lever for rewinding the film you simply push this middle button and twist it and it comes out that's what you use and to pull it down you simply press and twist and that's it so those are the basic controls of the camera also you have the flash selector x is for uh, electronic flash and mf is for bulb flash and you simply twist this thing depending on the flash the type of flash you have connected. Um, those are the basic controls of the camera. Uh, having to account that in order to um, change the speeds on this camera, you have to cock the camera first. You cock it, and then you pull up the knob and change the speed by twisting. So remember. Cock, lift, and twist. Um, people, re mechanics recommend to do that, not to change the speed automatically uh, without cocking. That's what they recommend in this camera. So, you know, when you want to change your speed, cock it, lift, and twist to your desired speed. Um, that are the controls if you want to see um, how to load a, a roll of film uh, and use Zenit you can check any other review on the channel uh, it's basically the same procedure in all of these cameras um, you simply open it load the film in uh, do that um, I will see if I 
made a video explaining that in these cameras and others but if you want to know how to load a film in this camera how to take it out check the the review of the Zenit EM or any other, any other Zenit channel so um, also we have the the how to check these cameras if you're going to buy one uh, what you need to do is cock the camera it should cock freely without any problem and it should return without any problem then you open the tray and start shooting in every speed and you load the camera and shoot it several times in all its speeds and in all the speeds the curtains should move softly when you cock the camera and they should return and close fastly when you shoot like so if your camera does that in every speed you have a healthy uh, shooting mechanism so look for that um, then if you want to check the light metering system you expose this sensor to the light and this needle should move so I'm covering from light exposing it to light covering exposing if it does that into the light it means that your sensor is alive and probably working However, have in mind that um, it could be depilated because it's a chemical reaction that does that. So chemicals decay with time. So to be sure, take a camera that you know the exposimeter is working right for sure and compare the readings. If you know, if you want to know how to use the system, I have a dedicated video on the channel, so check it out if you want. Um, but if you see that sign, it's a good sign. Take a camera, compare it if it gives you a correct uh, exposure, and if not, take it to a mechanic shop and they will fix it for you or calibrate it. Um, and that's pretty much all you have to check in this camera because it's a very simple camera. Check that it cocks okay and returns okay. Check that the curtains work as I showed you. Check that this is working. Check the, the visor. that it's, uh, it's clean on the inside, that you can see okay through it. There are no lines, no weird things like so. And the camera should be ready to use and without any troubles. Um, this is a good camera. I'm, it's very simple, it's reliable, uh, it's cheap. It usually comes with great lenses uh, like the Helios 44.2 that it's even adapted to digital camera so you can sell that if you're in, if you don't like it or so or you want to make a little investment um these industrial lenses too they are really cool and small um so my overall thinking of this camera i have shot it and it makes good pictures that depends most in uh, in your lenses than the camera but you know it, it works okay it's a heavy camera, it's a sturdy camera, uh, it works very good. Uh, so my thinking is, um, it's a good starting camera if you don't want to spend a lot of money um, or you want to collect cameras or you want to have one, you can buy one of these. It will work fine if you check it correctly and it works. And it's, um, it's a handsome camera I believe it, it's the silver color and the shape it's it's cool in shape and um, be aware of its limitations uh, the the metering system it's very limited in its ISO range the speeds are very limited but if you are kind of searching for an for a beginner's camera to understand that the thing to feel it it's a good camera they run for cheap, they were made in huge numbers and they are not special cameras in any sense. So don't let people rip you off, uh, they are cheap cameras. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this review. I hope it was clear for you. If you have any doubts, any comments, leave them below. Uh, I hope you enjoy and have a great day.